Hello, um, this is a video about keeping your lab notebooks. Um, the first thing I'm going to start off is the pre-lab assignment. Um, this needs to be done before you come to lab and they each need to consist of uh, experiment title, the objective of the experiment, and then an introduction, which will kind of entail the experimental procedure or give an outline of it. Um, if you do not do the pre-lab assignment, that means that you do not get to do the experiment. Um, you will be asked to come back to a different lab section or you'll have to make it up um, at the end of the semester with a makeup lab. So make sure you do the pre-lab assignment before you come to lab. The whole point of the pre-lab assignment is to get you ready for lab and so that you know what you're doing um, a little bit before you come to the lab. Um, this is also a safety issue, so if you can foresee things happening, then you will be prepared to do that. And also it's an issue of time management. If you are just reading the lab experiment for the first time when you are in lab, it will take a lot longer and you may not finish the lab. Okay, so what is going on here? We have an experiment title. Um, that is usually found here, experiment title. So don't just write experiment one on the notebook page. You wanna make sure you write out the experiment one plus the, um, the title of the experiment. This is for you to know what they, the experiment is that you're doing and also for us when you are collecting lab reports so we don't get piles mixed up. Um, next is the objective. Again, you'll find that at the beginning of here. So you can, if you want to write this down exactly as written here, you can, or if you want to paraphrase or shorten that, you can do that as well. But that should be in the pre-lab. So what I have in this notebook example here, there's the title, you have the date, and then the two bullets listed there for the objectives. And if you want to add other object objectives, you certainly can do that. Um, the other thing here is the introduction that is included um, that needs to summarize or outline experimental procedures. So in your lab manual, this is just in your lab manual, there's a couple of ex um, examples here of how you can do the pre-lab assignment. Um, so this person has numbered a couple of the steps. Um, so this is outlining the experiment. You don't have to number steps if you don't want to. Um, you can summarize it in a paragraph. So for experiment one, again, that I've done here for you, um, you, this is just a summary. So the mass of a few objects will be measured and the precision and accuracy of the balance will be observed. Volume will be determined in graduated cylinders. Varying amounts of volume will be delivered using volumetric and graduated pipettes. The density of water and other objects will be determined. So this is the overview of the entire experiment, which is what we're going for. Um, you can notice that it's not very long. This is only a paragraph and that summarizes the entire lab experiment. If you choose to detail the steps of the entire experiment, you can. Um, and if that might be advantageous to you later on because you can use these lab notebooks in your lab practical. So that's something to think about when you're doing the pre-labs. Um, things that we don't want to see, so this is not a good example here, um, is just writing these steps down. Um, so if I look at the lab manual here, I'll come back to that page. If you look at the lab manual and the steps in the procedure, it just says determination of mass by difference. You go to part B, determination of volume with the graduated cylinder. So all that this type of pre-lab tells me is that you read the major parts of the experiment and you didn't actually read the procedure. You might have, but from what I can tell from what you wrote in your pre-lab, it just looks like you just wrote down these here. So make sure you summarize each of these. If you wanna write each of these steps, you can, and then have a, a description short below that, that's perfect. Um, just include more details that looks like you read something other than using a graduated pipette. For your post-lab report, you want to write down any observations um, as they're recorded, as they happen. Um, you don't have to write out the whole procedure. If you want to, you can, again, because you can use your lab notebook on the lab practical, that might be a good idea. Um, the post-lab report will have all of the data that you collected during the experiment and um, can also have a brief procedure. And you wanna record data as it's being collected. Um, be sure to have labels and units for your entries. Um, and avoid recording data on scraps of paper. Um, you want to organize this carefully and not have it be a scavenger hunt of data. Um, it's very hard to follow calculations if 
things are all over the place. Um, you want to record data in permanent ink as you perform the experiment. Um, because you can't erase, because they're carbon copied notebooks, there's not really a point to using pencil here. Um, and if you make a mistake, just cross out the mistake with a single line, like it is shown here, and don't just cross out everything so that you can't see anything anymore. Um, if you have a big section of data with a big mistake, just cross out the whole section with one diagonal line. Um, so there's a couple of things that you can look at here for common mistakes, and then there's an example of a lab procedure here. So there's like a step here, and then there was, is the data, um, and then they haven't collected yet for trial two. So this is an example of a well-organized notebook. Um, you can see where the data observations are, and then data analysis. Um, other notebooks that you might see, um, so this is maybe a more brief one. I would say this is the, the bare minimum of what you should have in your notebook. So this might be, I don't remember, this might be for experiment nine, um, but you have part E. Um, they're collecting molar volume of CO2 here. This is the molar volume of CO2 um, over the moles. So we have the equation that's being used to do the calculations. And then there's things that are labeled with moles of something. Um, you have grams of carbon dioxide over moles, and all of these things have labels so you can follow the calculations um, well with these measurements. And again, this is trial one of this, and you can figure out the calculations here. So for the data collection, um, this is ma the different masses that are collected. So a lot of times I'll see just random numbers in the notebook, which doesn't really help you later and doesn't help me when I'm trying to follow your calculations. Um, you want to label what the, the measurement is. So you have mass of Tom's hole, mass of portion one, um, the generator, um, and then there's each of these parts are labeled as to what is being collected during what part of the procedure. Um, these types of things are very helpful for you and for the instructor that is trying to follow your lab reports. So try to, try to keep your numbers straight um, and your units especially so we know what is what and keep your numbers labeled as well. So on an experiment like the first one, you'll have different masses, beaker one, beaker two. Um, sometimes you can do the calculations right here because they're short and it doesn't take a lot of space. If you find that you're saving your calculations till the end of the experiment, if you want, you can just collect all of your data and then have a separate section for calculations. Uh, one thing that you wanna make sure that you do when you're making your notebook, um, is again you don't want random numbers floating around here and units and scribbles uh, you don't this is a, a lab notebook not a diary so don't just scribble things and again you don't want post-it notes with data on them uh, but the other thing to remember is to put the divider page in between the notebook pages if you don't do that this will be blank on this page but the copy that the instructor gets will have the scribbles and things on it, and sometimes it looks a lot darker than this, so that does make it hard to read. So make sure that you have all of the divider pages in each between each of the notebook pages. So really quickly, I'm just gonna go over a lot of common notebook errors that I see when I'm grading notebooks. Um, you might be missing units or labels, uh, so there's just naked numbers floating around the page. So I don't know if things are molecular weights or of what it's a molecular weight of or moles. Or is it widgets? Are you dealing with gigawatts? Um, so label your units and your numbers. Um, there might not be enough details or not enough data is present. Um, again, with the floating numbers on the page, I don't know what that is. Um, if, is it a beginning mass or a final mass? So just make sure that you have details so that we can follow your calculations. Um, make sure you show your calculations. They should be written out in the lab notebook. Um, if they are done incorrectly, this can be corrected so and given partial credit. So if I can follow your work and there was just a mathematical error in your calculation, I can account for that. Or if you mix something up or subtracted the wrong thing, we can fix that. Um, but if an answer is wrong, um, that's all I can tell you is that it's wrong. Um, sometimes your data might not match your lab partners, and it should if you're collecting data together. Um, so I don't know if it was something inverted numbers or if it was copied from another person, which is not your lab partner. So make sure you watch out for that. Um, you may be missing data from 
your lab report. So maybe you only had data for parts A and B, but somehow you have calculations for part C and D. So make sure you have all of your data there. Um, hard to read. So handwriting is sloppy or illegible. Make sure you write as neatly as you can for the instructors. Um, sometimes numbers and things are not clearly labeled. Stuff is scattered all around the page or multiple pages. Um, so try to make sure your lab notebook has a flow to it. Um, you may get points taken off for incorrect calculations or they're just telling you that it's done incorrectly. Or I might not be able to follow what calculations because numbers are written. Um, I can't tell if you're adding, subtracting, or multiplying, dividing. Um, and also these will have no units, so I can't tell what it is. Um, if you're asked a question where you need to answer with a value, don't just guess the value. Do the actual calculation. Um, you may have issues with spelling. Um, when there's a lab experiment with graphs involved, you want to make sure that your graphs have the axis labeled with units um, and the title, or if you need a legend because there's multiple lines, you want to include that as well. Um, your axes might be incorrect, either use the wrong axis or it's reversed, you might have graphed X on Y. Um, if you're writing ionic equations or using anything with ions, you might be missing charges or the physical state, so it's solid, liquid, or aqueous. Um, sig figs is a big one, so you're usually not recording enough digits off of the balance or um, with a graduated cylinder, or you've done the incorrect number of sig figs in your calculation. So those are the big things to be uh, watching out for in your notebook.